The Atlantic City National, scheduled for 2020, obviously didn't happen, but the word pandemic didn't frighten the locals. It's summertime 2022, and the boardwalk is thriving. A long walk for some. The sights are full of casino lights, fortune tellers, and souvenir shops. There's plenty of music. And where else can you find the best funnel cakes and pizza? If you say you're down the shore, it must be New Jersey. And trust me, no one does it better. Okay, Wednesday night at the hotel room down here after a two hour or so drive. I was able to hit the boardwalk a few steps in, soak up some rays. I took a swing by the convention center and around four o'clock when they opened and the line was literally around the building, thousands of uh, attendees ready to do VIP, uh, pick up their autograph tickets and check out the show. I ran to a few dealers this evening. They said it was insane. The atmosphere is intense. People are looking to to spend money and pick up the stuff they need. So I'm gonna get my rest now and tomorrow morning, bright and early, way before they open on Thursday morning at 10 a.m. and we'll see what kind of crowd greets me. So I'm an hour into the show. I just stopped by Payne Sports Collectibles out of Iowa and I wrapped up my base 69 set, my master 71 set, found 10 of the 20 62 green variations and a couple of variations from the late 50s. So we're off to a fantastic start. Just like that, half an hour later, I finished three more sets. So this is a pretty good show. It's not as um, intimidating as I thought it was to be. It's very modular, the layout of the floor.
seeing how busy the autograph pavilion was, I was informed that all autograph purchases are done online now. So you send them your email, and they'll send you a code, and the code gets scanned when you want to get your autograph instead of uh, having a paper ticket anymore. So we're into the digital age even more now with this hobby. Boy, I'm glad I'm not thirsty. $13 for a Coors Light. For one. I know this is going to be a lengthy video, so before I get to showing you all the stuff I picked up, I need to tell you about the most important part and the best part for me of the entire trip, and that was meeting all you guys from the YouTube community. What an amazing bunch of creative and talented guys, uh, super nice, super friendly. I met so many of you, and I tried to match the faces to the name for the channel, and forgive me tenfold if I left anybody out. There's still dozens of you I haven't been introduced to yet, but the ones I do remember are here. And if I didn't get your name down, you know, send me a note below and kick me in the ass and, and let me know that we indeed met. If you haven't been to a national yet or missed out in the last few years, I highly recommend it, if only for the overall experience. Besides the enormous amount of auction catalogs that were readily available, some of which you see here, there were a few giveaways to be found. Heritage put out a trading card set advertising the results of their previous auction baseball and soccer pack giveaways, and a couple of new grading card companies showing their slabs, including one that does it horizontally now. I just like the shine on that, Peyton Manning. Now, I didn't tell everybody about everything I picked up while down there for the two and a half days, but I did finish some tops runs for my PC, my side PCs. Steve Carlton, lefty, 68 and 69, finishes my tops run from the beginning for all of his cards. A beat up 1970 to go along with the 71 and 72 of Pete Rose finishes my Topps 1970s run. Another 70s run of a baseball superstar complete, Reginald Martinez Jackson. I wound up picking up enough cards that one of the dealers gave me the all-star card from 1970 for free. Good deal. The 1971 Nolan Ryan is off center left to right and there's a small crease on the bottom of the 1970 but these two cards, along with a pretty well-centered 1972 and 74, completes my run of Lynn Nolan Ryan. Newest Hall of Famer Jim Cott picked up one card of his to put in my Hall of Fame binder. 
And future Hall of Famer LeBron James on his upper deck rookie debut completes my collection of every player on the NBA at 75 team. I was hoping it would be a good omen when I realized that my hotel room was on the 19th floor, but I really couldn't find much of number 19 Robin Yount aside from his rookie and some of the oddball hostess cards. However, I did pick up this, 2020 Sport Kings, not as highly sought after as Upper Deck or Panini, but a nice autograph and three color game use swatch. Number to 10, the numbering really doesn't matter on a lesser company like Sport Kings, but for the price, I couldn't pass it up and I had to just have at least one Yount at the National. I also picked up these. From 1975, 18-year-old rookie Robin Yount with 41-ish veteran Hank Aaron. Robin's first year, Hank's last, so thanks a million, Mr. Aaron. Been looking for that pen for about 20 years. On the bottom left, 1993 Country Time, a promotion uh, stadium giveaway with the Lemonade Maker. And on the bottom right, 1993 Windcraft pen, and there's a character of Yount on the left side. I know what you're thinking. Mike, let's get to the good stuff. Okay, vintage sets. I said I finished a few off, and here they are. High number 1961 of Pancho Herrera. Finally got one centered and without any red bleeding that they don't normally find on these examples. So the 61 master set is officially complete. My 1969 base set is officially complete with the addition of Bobby Bonds, his rookie card. There are 23 white letter variations. I have six, no big names, no big stars, and based on the pricing that I saw at the National for the few that were there, including the Mickey Mantle, I think I'm not gonna go for it and I'm fine having just the 69 base. There's other things I can work on and focus my resources more efficiently towards. The addition of two more high numbers from 1971, Bobby Mercer and checklist number 619, the third variation, a clean, unchecked, Checklist completes my 1971 master set. And there was a newly discovered variation on the checklist on the right from 1972, in which the star next to the copyright line on back is adjusted more towards the left. So of course I had to get that because you know I'm not very well. 1972 master set is officially complete. I picked up three of the remaining nine variations I need for the 1958 set. Two yellow letters, including Hall of Famer Dick Williams, and the final team checklist card, this one of the Tigers, in which the players are listed alphabetically on the back. Here's the final of five no option statement cards I needed for my 1959 set. Billy Lowe's does not have the mention of his going to the minors on reverse, so all of those have been picked up. And that left me with just two, both of the same player, the same card, number 40, Warren Spawn. So this card is a three, and it looks fantastic for a three, but I'm not even concerned over the slab or the grade or even the front. It's the back. This is the 1931 obscured version in which they mistakenly printed his birth year as 1931 instead of 21 and tried to correct it. Now, there's Another version that's also incorrect in which the 31 is shown in full. You can read it perfectly. And I found one at the show, the first one I've ever seen in person. And the price was more than three times what I paid for this copy. So this is going to really grind my gears and piss me off to the fact that I have to get the final variation, which will be the final card for my 1959 master set. So the hunt is going to be on. I may have to start saving up now for next year's show in case it's there and I can get it at a, a decent price. It was a little overpriced and the dealer didn't want to help me out. So the search is on. For me, the highlight in terms of picking up cards at the show was finding 12 green tints for my 1962 Super set, including four of the Babe Ruth story. I am now down to needing eight half of which are Babe Ruth and the Al K line. Pretty powerful story. I got a Tim McCarver rookie on the bottom left as well. These are pretty clean considering they're green tints. Uh, I'm trying to keep mine uniform with my base set. So this was really a great pickup to pick up more than half of what I needed going in.
If you're keeping score at home, you realize there's one more set I said I completed but haven't shown yet. That big reveal will happen next month, so stay tuned. Let me give a big thank you to the dealers that helped out in me building these master sets and coming oh so close to finishing all of them. If you can't read the contact information, send me a note below. Uh, you can always email them. They're looking forward to doing the next national, the Philly show, and other shows in the Midwest, the big ones. So give them a shout out on their emails if you have anything you might be looking for. Who says YouTube creators aren't creative? Many came supplied with Custom cards. I'm not sure if this is a Bowman, Bowman rookie, rookie card, XRC, Bowman first year. Check out Victor, he'll let you know. He's the expert. Of course, John signed his 1971 in red for the Red Sox, a numbered piece. And I met Al, who I just got in with the numbering system, and he picked up an amazing autograph. I'm not going to spoil it. It's not enough to say that our favorite reindeer created these cards. He literally created the artwork on these cards and a very, very ingenious marketing move of modern and classic players. But you scan the code on the back and watch his YouTube video and how he made it. Genius. And of course, Jake had to be different and give us a 1956 card little oversized like the originals so they don't fit in our nine pocket pages. This is actually a hybrid 1956, 1961 back, staying kind of true to the green color on the tops uh, versions. Could you make the type any smaller? Just kidding. Thanks, Jake. Mike Hitman 23 picked up a bunch of these 1970 tops posters and I just happened to comment on how clean they looked with relatively zero creasing or tears or rips in them. And he goes, hey, I got three Frank Robinsons. You can have one. So he just gave me one. I met the kid like two hours before. How awesome is that? How cool are these guys? They certainly are cool and not just smart and passionate collectors. They're good people. The good news is Chicago is less than one calendar year away. So until then. Mm -hmm.